One of the main tenets of intelligent design is the idea of irreducible complexity. The idea that some mechanisms are so complex involving so many parts that they could not evolve in steps because in a system which is so complex, having some of the parts or some of the aspects would not pro provide any function whatsoever. And so therefore, for example, a very complex set of mechanisms such as immune defenses, which involve uh, many receptors, many uh, hormones, a number of mechanisms uh, in immune cells, would be an example of this irreducible complexity. An intelligent design advocate would argue, what good would an MHC protein B without a lymphocyte which could react with it? What good would antibodies be without the complement system that they activate? There are so many parts in these reactions. What good would one part be without others? And so if the intelligent design advocates are correct, then there should be no examples of organisms which have some but not all of the components of these complex immune reactions in humans. In contrast, if the evolutionary model is correct, when studying the molecular mechanisms of immunity in other organisms, one should find not only that simpler organisms have some but not all of the genetic mechanisms found in humans, but that there would be a pattern that along the nested hierarchy, some of the steps in the human complexity would have evolved in early prokaryotes. Others would have evolved in early eukaryotes. Others would have evolved in early animals and early vertebrates and early nathostomes, etc. So there are two very different models for how genetic molecular complexity, such as, for example, the complexity of the immune system, might have arisen. This animation depicts the nested hierarchy of life, that grouping of biological categories starting off with the largest, such as all life and eukaryotes and animals, etc., and then becoming smaller and smaller uh, to those uh, biological groups such as primates, apes, etc., uh, to which humans belong but few other biological organisms do. And as these groups proceed, one can see that some of the components of the complex uh, immune mechanisms found in humans uh, must have evolved early with early eukaryotes because eukaryotes such as yeast possess some of these. Others evolved in early animals. Others evolved in early metazoan animals, early bilateral animals, etc. So that one can find some of the components which humans use in their immune reactions in jellyfish and in all metazoan animals, in worms and in all bilaterans, in fruit flies and in all coelomates, etc. So this pattern is contrary to what the uh, irreducible complexity model poses, because here are examples of organisms which have some, but not all, of the mechanisms uh, used in the complex human immune reactions. So there were MHC proteins before there were lymphocytes which could use them in the way that uh, human uh, cells do. There were the sections of antibodies before there were complete antibodies. Antibodies existed in early nathostome fish before there was the ability to shuffle the components of antibodies. Components of the complement system existed before antibodies made use of them when targeting microbes. And so one can see that complexity can develop in stages. Not only is this possible, but a, an examination of comparative genomics suggests that this is indeed what happened, and that as we go through the cladogram of life, this nested hierarchy as ancestral forms evolved from you know, the ancestors of all life to those of eukaryotes to the early animals, etc., that components of the human immune system evolved through a series of gradual transitions over very long periods of time.